Okay, so uh, this is a, another C Sharp application. Uh, previously, I uploaded a video on Modbus uh, on C Sharp using Codices. Now, this one is actually using the network variables from Codices uh, on a UDP network. This is not Modbus TCP, this is just an UDP network. And actually, I think this is a little bit uh, simpler than the other one. And uh, we'll see here why. So, first of all, what do we need to... We have to compare just a couple of things here in Codices. Um, so, again, just as, as in the um, Modbus application, here what I'm doing is I just have a blinker, uh, and then I have counters, and what I'm doing is I'm just uh, increment, increasing the, the value on, a, on some variables, and I'm um, switching a boolean to false and true, and uh, here I just write those variables. So I have three variables, integer, double integer, and real, uh, and there should be a boolean as well. So basically here, what you have to do is you don't have to add anything like uh, Ethernet adapter or anything at all. You just have to add these two uh, instances, which is one network variable list, and this I call send, and this is a uh, type receive. And you can do that by clicking, uh, right click on application, add object, and then here you'll see receiver and sender. So let's say that I want to uh, hit a sender. So here in the sender, I'm going to put the name, whatever, like NBL, um, sender, uh, and then I'll select the network UDP, and then this is running on the main task. And here, this one is, is kind of important. This one has to match what whatever uh, whichever number you put here, it has to match the number that you specify in the C-Sharp application. So on the one that I already created, I, ha I put here at number two. And then here, I didn't change anything else. Now, over here, you're going to have to change uh, the IP address and the port. Now, the port uh, 1202 is the one that's by default. Uh, I had to change this to 1203 because uh, 1202, I'm using it for receiving. And you'll see in a, in a minute here that you can change the port for receiving. At least uh, I didn't find the way, like the simple way to do that. Maybe you can by uh, changing the parameters here or something, but uh, I didn't look uh, very, uh, very in-depth into that. And then here you have to set the IP address to, I believe it's where, where you're sent in. Let me double check here. Network properties, settings, yeah. So this is where I'm sending the, the, the information. Uh, sorry, it was creating a new one. So, uh, we already said UDP settings here. So if you want to test it, change it to 1203. If you want to explore into how to change the port on the, on the receiver, then you can do it as well. Uh, and then here you just set, set the IP address of the computer that will be running the C Sharp application. So in this, I believe mine is that one. So I, I'm not going to create that one because I already have it here. And then here, you, here you, what you'll do is you're going to declare uh, how many variables that you want and uh, you can set initial values to those variables here i just did that for um, just to put a, a random variable doesn't have to be those um and then you have to set which type of variables they are and we have to match these types to uh, whatever we on c-sharp so you'll see that in a minute here um what else do we need to do we need to create a receive uh, NBL or network variable list receiver and here, here you again you establish the name main task import from file you'll see here that on C sharp we're, we're gonna generate a file which has an extension GDL and we have to import that here so we'll do that in a minute then you create that 
and then MDL receive. Once you import that GDL file, you, uh, your screen is gonna look like something like this. Uh, you don't have you don't have to type anything here. This is uh, automatically created by a code. This once you import the that GDL uh, file. Uh, what else did I have to do here? I think this library is out added automatically when you add the NBL uh, instances here. Uh, I believe I did. Uh, no, I didn't have to change the version here. But if you have problems, maybe you can try it with, with an older version or a newer version, depending on the hardware that you're running. Um, what else? Uh, libraries? No, I just used the util, uh, util library just for the blink. And that's about it. That's the only thing that you have to do to code So I'm going to close everything and just leave the send and see. And I'm going to split the screen like this. Login. All right, so I do see that uh, I'm sending the I'm sending information via UDP to some someone, right? So first of all, you will, you will have to create your C sharp application, and here again, I'm using a DLL file that I got I got from the internet, um, and then I'm using the threading uh, um, instance as well, reference as well. Uh, as well as um, as I did on the map plus TCP application. Then what else? Okay, here uh, I also I'm also running two threads, not three. I'm just using one thread for reading and one thread for writing. And maybe if you know more about the C sharp, you can do it in some other way. This is the way I found and works for me or for this example at least. Um, and now, uh, so here I start. On um, this section, I start my two threads, I start my read thread and my write thread, and then I execute my read. Let me see. Yeah. So my read thread, it's always executing, I believe. Here I have a while through. True. Okay. So uh, first of all, on my read thread, on my read uh, method, what I do is I create an instance of a uh, this is from the uh, DLL uh, codices net bars. So you'll, fi you'll find that on the DLL file. So if you type in SR, you'll see that there. Um, so I create a new instance for that, SR codices net bars, and then this is the code ID, and this is the identifier that I said was going to be important here in codices when doing the send properties network properties so this is a list identifier you have to match these two numbers otherwise you not have communication so two and then here uh, so on my design I don't have a, an IP address text box I just set the, the, the IP address from the code um, now here I do a quick explanation on why I'm using the 1203 for the for the read and not, not the 1202 as I mentioned before this uh, the 1202 is already being used by the write method, so here I'm using the 1203. And here, basically, what what I'm doing is I'm just adding um, I'm just adding uh, data types to this guy, and then we'll see that uh, then I create. So here I um, I have a read values variable, uh, array list, and then I assign the values that I'm reading to this uh, array list, read values array list. So let's find that and see if there's no other declaration. No, this is where I declare it. So this is the list where the variables that are uh, are being read will be written to, and then. This is I had to do I had to use these if statements because I'm using threads. So if I didn't use these uh, if statements and I wanted to write directly into the text box, I would have had to um, 
use it outside of this thread of, of this uh, read method but if you can find an, another way that's great if not you can use this one um and uh yeah so basically what i'm doing here is i'm just writing whatever i'm about whatever i'm reading from uh, here i'm writing it to the text boxes that are on the left hand side here and then okay in here i'm using a catch uh, oh, sorry, I'm using a try and catch. So if this can't be executed, then I catch an exception and say there's a timeout because there was no communication, uh, cable or the PLC is not in run or whatever. Uh, and then um, you get a you get a dialogue, a message box, and then there you can um, select to abort the communication. And what I'll do is that I'll that I'll close the app, and I, I execute. If you select the abort button, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna execute this method, which is down here, and then this one just exits the application and aborts the threads. Um, this is the way that I was able to make it work. Um, now. The right uh, method is very similar. Uh, here, what I'm doing is I'm just um, again I declare my instance of the SR codices netbars, and then I put the cov ID, IP address, and here what I do is I convert directly what I have from the text box. I convert it to the each type of uh, the, the data data type. So in this case, integers, booleans, in 32, integer 32 and decimal. And then I type it to, or I transfer that to each of the um, um, values in the data collection. And here I create the DVL file that I was talking about. Here you have to put the path where you want to create that um, DVL file. And this is the one that, you, that you're going to import into codices. And this one you'll get as soon as you compile these, uh, this code. And I believe just, compi just by compiling it, you, you'll get the GBL file. And here, again, I use and try and catch. Here, the try for sending values. I catch exceptions and say, hey, something's, hum something's not right. And... Um, Different. This is different from the read. So, I execute the right method. Uh, I execute the right method every time I hit the uh, send button, which I have here on the bottom here. Um, and uh, that's about it. So I think that this um, method is a little bit simpler than the. Um, than the Modbus TCP, but downside is that here you're using a UDP network, um, so you don't have uh, some like checksum or redundancy or whatever, um, some of the other uh, features that you get out of a TCP network. Um, but again, depending on the application, this might be a, a little bit more attractive. So if I run this application, this is what it looks like. Uh, it's loading here. So this is what it looks like. I'm getting data from codices here. So this is the data that I'm sending false, true, false. And then if I wanted to, if I wanted to send something, so here I, I want to, I can put like an integer here, send, get the value in codices. And then if I want to turn that boolean, true, send, and then double in your integer, and then real 3.1415 send and yeah so that's this is the way it works and um so i i think this is a little bit simpler but uh this will depend on the application thank you for watching